by a dynamic prayer leader, uh, a sincere prayer leader. I thank God for uh, that in the person of Pastor Gary Shelton, uh, West Region District. And so we thank God for you. I thank God for uh, him being at the tip of the spear in our global mission. And I thank God for the awareness that he brings to uh, this morning of prayer. And so um, we thank God just before we receive him, let's go ahead and, and put it in your hearing and understanding that the reason for our, our call this morning, the reason for the focus for our prayer is thanksgiving for the 10 days of prayer that we have just come out of as an international church. Revelation chapter 14, uh, verses 6 through 12, we uh, heard words of life about the three angels call to prayer. And so uh, we've just come out of that time of 10 days of prayer. We're thanking God for it. We're, we're understanding that we're going forward with the 10 days of prayer spirit, whether it's 10 days of prayer or not. Every day we're crying out to God with that same tenacity that we did in these 10 days of prayer. And we just want to thank God for his grace being upon us as we're going forward. Just before we receive Pastor Shelton, I'll say this. Um, I have been, I have said it many times. This is the international church of God by faith. But as I looked at that first angel in the word of God in Revelation 14, this is an incredible passage of scripture because uh, glory to God. Uh, I mean, think about Revelation now. Revelation chapter 9, you got these uh, angelic uh, creatures coming out of the pit that are anointed for persecution to those that do not belong to the family of God. Revelation chapter 12, you see this uh, incredible prophetic picture of the past and the future in the same chapter. Then Revelation 13, you've got this beast this antichrist figure coming up glory to god but then in revelation 14 we, we drill down on these three angels that first angel came to preach the gospel to the inhabitants of the earth to every nation tribe language and people that angel was declaring the gospel in russian that angel was declaring the gospel in mandinka that angel was proclaiming the gospel in Spain. It doesn't matter the language, the ethnicity. He was declaring the gospel. But then that second angel came, and he was predicting the doom of Babylon. Everything that's not God is going down. Babylon is fallen, and all, who has made all the nations to drink of the wine, uh, the passion of her immorality, likening Babylon to a prostitute, really. And then that third angel was coming along and he declared that anyone that worships the beast the angel was saying that if you don't accept Christ if you choose into Christ instead of Christ then you're choosing judgment and destruction that's the message of these three angels and we're identifying with that as an international church and so we thank God for that spirit we thank God for his truth we thank God for his love but we thank God for the whole counsel of God. Those angels were bringing the whole counsel. Yes, God loves you. Yes, he sent his son. But if you don't accept him, there's a bill that's going to come due. Oh, glory to God. And so with that, let's receive now Pastor Gary Shelton. Let's join him and raise our voice in thanking God and going forward in the name of Jesus. Let's receive him now in Jesus' name. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dunmore. Good morning, family. Let's go to uh, before the throne of grace and prayer this morning. Gracious Father, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We, we bless your holy name. We, we reverence you. We acknowledge you as our God, our Father, our King, our Lord of Lords. Father, we come this morning thanking you for new mercies this morning. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave us life that we now have life and life eternal. Thank you for the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit that lives now in the heart of believers. Father, we come this morning because you're good, because you are kind. And we thank you, God, for the power and the privilege of prayer. We thank you, Father God, for the 10 days of prayer and consecration that we just ended. We thank you for the privilege of prayer to be able to speak to the creator of all things. And we thank you for the power of prayer. 
God, as we come now and as we uh, ask to move forward, we ask, God, that you would lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. For your word declared is not by power nor by might, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to revisit your word in those 10 days of consecration, to be reminded of what you have said and what you have spoken unto us. Now, Father God, as we move forward, let us be better in the things that we do. Let us, God, focus on the assignment at hand and put our hands to the plow and not look back. Father, we know that time is winding up and the time for you is at hand. Let us now work while it's day because night cometh, Father, and no man can work. But as we do that work and as we do that will, let us do it in prayer, seeking your faith, seeking your direction seeking your will and seeking your plan. I thank you, Father, for the word of God said that man should always pray and not to faint. We know that prayer is where our relationship, our foundation is built with you. We know that prayer, God, is where we learn to hear your voice. For you declare that your sheep know your voice and a stranger that we will not follow. God, we ask you now that you would give your church, the church of the living God, holy boldness, even in this dark hour of uncertainty, of the hour of this pandemic, the hour of racial tension, of the hour where we are facing political challenges. But God, we ask for holy boldness right now that we may go forth and continue to do the work. The mantle has been given off to us in our generation. It's our time to move forth and to do thine will, O oh God. Father, we ask now that you lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. For you said in your word, the steps of a good man has been ordered by the Lord, and that you did light in his ways. Help us, God, to be a light that's set up on a hill that cannot be hid. For you said that we are the light of the world, and help us to show forth our good works, that men might see them, that you might be glorified in heaven. God, we thank you right now for prayer. We thank you, God, that when we pray, you, that we know that you hear us. And if you hear us, you say it that you will send us an answer. We thank you, dear God, for the favor and the privilege and the opportunity to even serve in this prison generation. We thank you, God, for you chose us for a day as this, that you knew what would become in this day. You knew that we would be going through the situations and the things that are happening now. But Father, I thank you that you have confidence in us, that you have left us here to do thine work and to do thine will. God, help us to be faithful and obedient in the mighty name of Jesus. God, now let our life of prayer continue. Just not let these 10 days be over, but let us live a life of prayer. Let us live a life of communication and constantly talking to you. Oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, so that we might know what to do and how to do and when to do it. Father, we thank you for the leadership of this church. We thank you for the vision that you have given unto them. For you said in your word, without a vision, the people perish, the people will run them up. We thank you, God, that the vision has been written and the vision is plain. Help us through prayer, God, to go forth and to do thine will in the mighty name of Jesus. We need your help. We need your guidance. We need to know what it is and how you would have us to do it. Father God, we depend on you this morning, now, in the name of Jesus. Your word declared, Father, that you are the husbandman and we are the vine. Help us to stay connected to you. Whatever goes on in our life, whatever goes on in our world, help us to stay connected to you. Help us to stay fruitful. Help us, God, to go forth and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. For you said in your word that when this gospel has been preached throughout all the world, then shall the end come. Father, we pray right now again for boldness. Give us boldness to go into the highways and hedges. Give us boldness to witness even with a mask on. Don't let our voices be muffled because of a mask. Help us to share the glorious gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, God, for the confidence we have in you. We thank you, Father, for the insurance we have in you. And we know according to your word, anything that we ask according to your will, we can ask it in Jesus' name. And we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you are meeting our needs. We thank you right now, God, that you are giving us a greater understanding, a greater insight. 
We thank you right now, Father, that it's you that are ordering our steps. We thank you right now, God, that no powers or principalities will stop us, God, from going forth and doing what you have called us to do. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that Jesus declared that on this rock that you are building your church and that the gates of hell shall not prevail. We thank you, God, that your church is moving forward through the power of prayer. We thank you, Father, that your church is getting stronger through the power of prayer. We thank you that the anointing of the living God is falling fresh on your church because of the power of prayer. We thank you right now that prayer moves mountains. We thank you right now that prayer heals the sick. We thank you right now that prayer moves trouble out of our way. We thank you right now that prayer casts mountains into yonder sea. God, we give your name honor. We give your name glory this morning, and we thank you right now. We thank you, God, because we know that when we pray, when we sincerely open our heart unto you, that you would speak to our spirit, that you would speak to our mind, that you would give us confidence, that we are encouraged through prayer. Oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, let us continue to call on you. Let us continue to find a, some time in our day to spend time with you. Let us not forsake the time of prayer. You who gave us this, this day, you who give, who give us time, let us use some of the time that has been given by you to spend time with you, that we might hear your voice, that we might draw closer to you, that our relationship might grow deeper. Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I pray for the church of the living God. I pray for the by faith family. I pray for all of those who have been called for this hour in the name of Jesus. For you declared that there are many members but one body. Father, I pray for the spirit of unity. I pray for the spirit of oneness. There are power in one. I pray, God, now, Father, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus that you would give us one mind and, and one heart, that we would have one focus, that we would speak the same thing, that, that we would walk in the same way. Oh, God, we need you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we pray this morning, God, we know that you are sending answers right now. We pray for healing for those who are afflicted with sickness and disease and infirmities. For your word declared that with your strike, we're already healed. We pray, God, for people to come out of bondage, to come out of the uh, grasp of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. For you said, whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And then, Father, we pray for the souls of those who are still lost, who are blinded by the gods of this world. We pray that the word of God would be a hammer that would go forth, that would chisel everything away that the enemy has set forth. We ask, Father, in prayer this morning that you begin to go before us and take out a heart of stone. Oh, God, and replace it with a heart of flesh. We pray that you would break up the foul ground of the hearts of those who don't know you now in the pardon of their sins. God, we pray now in this day that we would lift up our voice like a trumpet. We pray that we would go forth in the mighty name of Jesus, and we, we would declare the victory now in the name of Jesus. God, you told us in your word to occupy till we come. Help us, God, to be about our Father's business. Help us, God, to do thine Father's will. Help us, God, to keep you first and foremost in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you again. We thank you for prayer. We thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to, to pray. You said if two or three of us Oh, God, would touch and agree, oh, God, that you would be in the midst of us. We thank you right now that you hearken diligently to our prayers because we are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray now in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to keep your hand on Yes, and amen. The answer to the promises of God, they are 
yea and amen. That's what the scriptures say. The word of God is right. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I have to, I have to say thank God this morning for uh, Pastor Gary Shelton. We thank God for our global missions leader. I thank God for Elder Shelton praying and prophesying. Glory to God. I, I, I'm, I'm not confusing words. I thank God for him praying and prophesying. The scripture says in 2 Peter chapter 1, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. The word of God is a more sure word of prophecy. And I heard Elder Shelton thanking God for these 10 days of prayer. I heard him declaring that a lifestyle of prayer, that we would have at that lifestyle of prayer. It was the kind of lifestyle that the, those evil men in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 13, when they accused Daniel uh, because Daniel didn't regard the king, they said, they answered and said, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, he doesn't pay any attention to you, O king, he, uh, he, or to the injunction that you sign. He keeps praying to his God three times a day. That's where the Muslims uh, counterfeited it and stole it from. But Lord, he, Elder Shelton was talking about that lifestyle of prayer, that we would adopt that and take that on. And I see and I hear and I feel a change in the atmosphere. The weather has changed. There is an awareness that we have now, glory to God, that we have to live a lifestyle of prayer. We have to have that 10-day spirit throughout. But then I heard Elder Shelton take it further. He talked about ingenuity, glory to God. He talked about proclaiming the gospel even with a mask on. Um, I've had to take a bullhorn in the street, glory to God, and stand on the curb and pray through the bullhorn um, to someone. Uh, just to get the word of God uh, over there. I mean, I can, we can socially distant, be socially distant, and still pray. And so Elder Shelton, he was speaking of that ingenuity. Oh, glory to God. And then, thank you, Jesus, he spoke of how it is that through prayer, we're going to go forward and achieve uh, and carry out the vision that is before us. He said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables so he may run that readeth it. Glory to God. And that was wrapped all up in his prayer and prophetic utterance. Glory to God. And so he did say in Isaiah chapter 55, so shall my word be, which goes forth out of my mouth and shall not return unto me boy, but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing which you have sent it. And so I thank God for that. And so we thank God for you, uh, Pastor Shelton. Thank God for the word of God going forth in prayer and in prophetic utterance. And I thank God for the realization that uh, there's a change in culture. You know something, um, it's clear, it's clear to me that everywhere you look in Scripture, when you look and see an incredible outpouring of God's power, there was prayer that preceded it. In uh, Isaiah chapter 37, when uh, Sennacherib sent a messengers to Jehoshaphat, uh, rather sent messengers to Hezekiah, and said that uh, we're going to come through and rape and pillage and trample y'all. And Hezekiah took that letter and got on his knees and spread it on the altar. And I Isaiah chapter 37, and the Bible says that 185,000 men died just because he got on his knees to pray. They prayed, glory to God, before Jehoshaphat put the praisers and singers and worshipers in front of the army, and then God went through and confounded them. And Paul and Silas was in prison in Acts chapter number 16, and the Bible says that they pray at midnight, they prayed and sang hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners heard them. And then the, the, the Bible says that uh, suddenly there was an earthquake. The foundations of the prison were shaken, all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. Paul and Silas was praying 
in singing hymns. Uh, glory to God. I know uh, my pastor, Bishop, he loves hymns and thank God for them. I don't know. They probably weren't singing uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, but they were, they were singing a hymn of their, uh, their own variety, much like how we sing that, a hymn of prayer. And they're just there. They're praying. They're worshiping. They're, they're invading the atmosphere in prayer and singing those hymns. And then the power of God moved. And that's what Elder Shelton was talking about. He was talking about a culture of prayer that would precede us and would permeate. And I'm going to stop on this, precious people. I'm going to stop on this. That we, glory to God, and I thank God we, we, we did it in the 10 days we started it. Glory to God. But there's a culture of prayer that we must begin to have where we pray over leaders and those that are bringing forth the words of life. Glory to God. Every time a word of God is coming forth, there should be someone and many folks, not just one or two. There should be many of us on our knees crying out. I'll say this. Paul said he wrote to the church in Ephesus over thousands of years ago and said in Ephesians 6, 19 and 20, he said, pray for me that words may be given to me when I open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of salvation for which I am an ambassador in chains and pray that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly and courageously as I should. If there's a preacher who's meditating, who's spending time in the Word, who's, who's listening and hearkening unto God, asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, what are you saying? There should be, there should be individuals praying just as earnestly, uh, prophesying and lifting up God's Word, that the Word will come, the miracle of preaching that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21, that the miracle of preaching Preaching will break chains. Elder Shelton spoke about that. It would break up the fallow ground, and the word would not be sown among thorns. There should be a lion-like cry of prayer that should be proceeding any time God's word is going forth. If Ephesus could pray for Paul, then how can, how can we not pray for those that will delineate the word of God? Oh, glory to God. I know, I know the word is right about it. So we thank God. We thank God for this incredible time of prayer. Listen, let's go forward. Let's do what Elder Shelton said. Let's go forward. Let's, let's be yielded to the Spirit of God. He, he referenced Mark, Matthew 5. He said, let your light shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father. Yeah, I know it's dark out there. Yes, I know Isaiah 60, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the glory of the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Go show the glory. Make it a great day. In Jesus' name, we love you. Te amamos todos personas. Te amamos todos personas. We love you, everybody. That's what we're saying. Glory to God. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.